So, high entropy alloys are a new class of alloys, and I'll link a great video by breaking taps sort of on them. Then instead of mixing two or three metals primarily, and using more like close to like one metal or two metals, sorry, primarily, and having a bunch of minor elements, you have like five, five or more elements mixed in high quantities of it, like each of them makes like 20% of the alloy or something. So it's not like one makes 1% or less. The reason, well first, this has many advantages compared to traditional alloys and many disadvantages. So first of all, why do we have traditional alloys with very few, one major element or two major elements and very few minor other elements? Well, when we got into it, if you have one major element, they have a certain crystal structure. Now, every time you add something extra to it, it disrupts that crystal structure. And that can disrupt in very complex ways. And the more stuff you add, the more ways it can disrupt it, the more possibilities. If you have a mix of 20 different things, it can combine in 20 different, it can combine in so many more ways than two things. And that means that throughout the whole thing, it might be much more uneven and much more unstable because there's so much more possibilities for stuff. So maybe one place, all the iron starts segregating, another place, copper starts segregating, and then there's iron copper in different places. And there's so much more instability that it's hard to make a reproducible metal that's the same nice thing throughout. Besides that, having that problem is just the complexity of just experimenting around with more stuff. And also, when you disrupt it in the environment, maybe it heats or cools down more, or if it gets pressure or crack, it's more likely to break apart and interact in nice ways, um, bad ways. So then, just by replacing a tiny bit, though, in the metal with some other element, it can have huge effects. Because remember, a metal has kind of like a single atom or nucleus sorry, in the sea of electrons, so the electrons are really spread out. So things, a little thing here, in one place can have a huge effect for the entire structure of a metal. Besides that having a little effect for the entire structure of the metal, it can also disrupt the crystal structure making it bigger without the whole thing. But we are getting better at high entropy materials, metals, so-called, so because entropy is like disorder, and these ones have more disorder because we have many more major constitutes, constitutes and how this can help is, well, again, it's more unstable. Let's imagine that now there's a flat plateau of stability. In this flat plateau of stability, if something gets, if you can make something with a flat plateau of stability, so it's like there's many things that are almost equal, if you bend or disrupt the material, there's many more places you could occupy that's still okay, that's not um, bad. These more places to occupy that are not bad have means that it, if the material gets bent or warped, it might still be as strong because you haven't broken crystal stocks as much and it disrupts. It might also lead to materials that they say are hard and flexible, which is kind of a one they mix because they can be hard if it's a basis, but once they crack, instead of cracking like a diamond and just shattering, they just bend and deform into a new, more stable position. And you can also get um, more even properties throughout because every little thing contributes in a little different way. So if one thing gets disrupted, other things will compensate for it or you get the temperature on parameters. So the disorder could actually make it more stable in some ways, but it's a lot harder thing to figure out. And we've by mistake figured it out some of these materials. Now, the problem is, though, you have to, in the beginning, really, really evenly mix everything together. And that is very hard to do. Then you have to cool down everything very, very fast. So normally what they do to get these stable mixtures is that they try to make nanoparticles with evenly doing it by coating something with different layers of each material, metal you want to make the alloy, then blasting it with a laser or they put it into solution and dissolve it or they make little nanoparticles of these materials and grind them together or deposit it complicated ways back and forth. 
but this is not the best ideal way if, if you want to do industrial level things. So a way around this, I think, is let's say we make a furnace. A furnace that we can put all this different metals and melt them together. Well, now if we cool it down, it is gonna, it might segregate, and also these metals have different densities themselves, so they might not mix so evenly together. So how can we mix these metals evenly, very evenly before they cool it down? And how can we cool them down properly? Well, here's one way we can mix them. Here, well, here are several ways. One is if we figure out how to do high temperature ultrasonic mixing. Ultrasonic mixing is we vibrate the whole thing with very specific sound, with very fast sound waves, and these can disrupt and mix stuff even with very vastly different density by breaking up surface layers and surface tension. It helps break up surface tension. It's like oil and water make small droplets. They're much more easily dispersed, but we're talking about high temperature molten liquids, not oil droplets. Another thing is that if you have sound waves that are rotating, and these can be ultrasonic or not, these sound moving, rotating sound waves can act like a physical way of stirring stuff without there actually being a physical um, thing in the device. So, how an example of this is if I put a sound wave, a sound wave on from one end and it emits and spreads out to another end, that can push some liquid from one end to another end. Now, if I put one perpendicular, it pushes liquid in a perpendicular direction. If I do it just right, first it goes forward, then it does the sound wave bends it in a direction until it starts rotating and mixing vortices. This can achieve it without the same fast speed as ultrasonic. Now, the reason why sound waves might work better is now you don't have to, you can, sound waves can mix stuff on a much smaller scale and much more precisely than a big rotary blender. And often, since they have these big wheels that are mixing moving stuff like in tens of centimeters, now we can move stuff in nanometers and really more thoroughly homogenize it on a tens of centimeter scale. Also, you don't have to dump in a big, also, you don't have to figure out how to dump in material, like a giant heavy probe into the material, or like a special blender or something like that. that you might have to think about temperature stuff. You can just have a container that can handle the temperature and just move the stuff with sound waves on the outside. Another thing is you spin the whole container instead of to mix up stuff or move the whole container back and forth. And that can get rid of having a little individual spinner inside the system to mix it up, which might be more stable. Another thing, potentially, you could do is that you could do this with bubbling in gases through stuff. Now gases bubbling in, you can mix it up on a very small scale and you don't have to have the same physical thing. What's it bubbling these gases can actually get rid of oxygen and other impurities within the sample. Or you can add certain gases like carbon, like Certain gases, if you add it, can have carbon or nitrogen, sulfur or phosphorus, which can lead to more ideal materials. If you don't want to get rid of something, but popping like argon to get rid of nitrogen in a material that's impurities. Another method, even beyond all this stuff that we're talking about, is to pump in, is to use a high pressure plasma torch or plasma injector to hit the surface of this thing and pump in and use that as like a plasma beam, beam that either forces waves or you can move the plasma beam around the whole thing to, to turn it without actually ever touching the material. And of course you can combine the pumping in air and the plasma torch with all the ultrasonic mixing. The last part of this whole thing is cooling it down after you make it so that it is, um, how would I say it? It cools down fast enough that there's not too much emergency. One way you could do that is by just quickly spraying it on a surface uh, in a very thin layer, or spraying droplets, so it doesn't have too much big temperature segregate, and you mix in those materials 
or you can remelt it quickly and forge it. Or you could download sections of it quickly or more evenly and clean it down evenly throughout a thick section. It's very hard, but one way of doing that is you pump in a lot of gas and let the gas suddenly escape to do it, but that can lead to explosive ones. Or you can develop um, ways with magnets to keep the material more evenly heated out throughout the material so it doesn't cool down first on the sides, it only cools down at a more slow, rapid rate that the heat can transfer out throughout the material wrap one. Or you melt the insides, um, or you remelt the outsides, you let it freeze from the inside out a little more. Stuff like that, so magnets also could modify the cooling characteristics. Well, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. I'm trying to reach a thousand subscribers in a year and four thousand watch hours, which is really hard, but really help I think you can do it. Or if you have any ideas for future videos, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. Again, thank you very much. Goodbye.